never wanted to build beautiful apps for iOS, Android, and even desktop with just one code base. Compose can make that dream a reality. But you are struggling to learn it. Today we are diving deep into the world of Compose with a crash course on its fundamental building blocks. So this video is going to be packed with a lot of information. So get ready to save tons of research time and become a Compose UI master. So don't miss out. Let's jump right in and get started. Okay, so now let's create here our project. And basically we are going to use this Kotlin multi-platform wizard in order to create our project. So for this case, you can give it the name. I'm just going to call it Compose Basics. And here you can change the ID to match your ID which you prefer. So you can follow this format here. And basically we're going to select Android, iOS and desktop. Okay, now let's click download here and extract it and open it in Android Studio. Okay, so here in Android Studio, let's directly go to open a new project. And basically you can go to a place where you have extracted it. Okay, so we have here a Compose Basics. So for this case, let's just click OK and open this project. So now when you finish up to launch the application, you're going to get the code like this one. So it's going to be a bit confusing if this is the first time learning Jepa Compose. For this case, I'm just going to delete everything in order for us to understand. Okay, so after that, I think you're going to ask yourself, what is a composable? So a composable is just a function, like a normal function, but with the ability to render UI. So basically here we can tell the compiler, hey, we want to show a text. Then we can create a composable function in order to render that particular text. So by default, composable functions are going to return a unit. So for example, here, I'm going to create a composable function. And this composable function here, for example, I'm just going to call this hello compose. So basically here, a composable function must be annotated with at composable in order to get the composable scope. And otherwise else, that is just going to be a normal function. And basically here, a composable by default is going to return a unit because it's not returning any type of thing, but actually rendering that particular UI at that particular point of time. So basically here we can tell, hey, we want to render a text. And here a text, for example, it can be hello. Now we can pass parameters here to this. So for example, here we can pass in a name. And this one is going to be of type of string, for example. So we want to pass this name also inside here. So for this case, we can just use a string template and pass in here the name. Okay, so we have here a composable function. Now we can try to learn this composable function here. So let's just call here hello compose. And basically here we can pass in the name parameter. So for example, here you can just call any type of name. So let's just call this hood. And for this case, you can try not to run this application in different types of uh, places. So for example, here we can try to run this application in desktop. So let's create, in order to run this for desktop, we can create here a configuration, go directly to Gradle, and inside here the task, we can write here desktop, desktop run, and here we want to call D. Now let's call main class, double dash, and call this quite. Now let's click apply and OK. Now we have a new configuration. Let's try to run this inside our uh, desktop. So you can see here our text, it has called hello hoods. And that is what we have written inside here. So this one is just a composable function. And basically a composable function renders a UI. Okay, so you have seen that we have different composable function and here we have created a custom composable function. And actually we have several types of composables. So for example, we have a composable for displaying a button. And here basically we have the on click. And inside here now we can pass in a text for that particular uh, button. For example, here, let's just call this button. And you can see right now here we are rendering a button. Okay, so you can see here there is a common theme inside uh, JEPA Compose or Composable Functions is that we have a lot of curly braces. So basically this is a declarative approach. So meaning that we're going to use a lot of higher order functions that are going to be returning something or not or performing a certain action. So if you don't know a higher order function, basically is a function that takes in function. So for example, here like this button here, we have this uh, composable function that is being called there uh, from deep down. So for example, here I can demonstrate. So this is just a normal function. For example, let's call this function four. 
And basically this takes in a parameter that is going to have a certain data type, for example, an integer. And basically this integer here, we can use it to perform certain actions. Nothing special here is happening and actually everything is looking uh, perfectly. And we can just call here, for example, our function. So let's just call here our for and pass in here too. And that is just a normal thing. Now, another case is we want to pass a function that takes in a function and that is called a higher order function. So for example, let's just call here for two. And instead, b is going to be a type of a function. And this is just an anonymous function, basically meaning a function that takes in a function. And this is the syntax. So basically, we have a parenthesis and here we are returning a unit. And basically, when you open up, you can see here we can call b as a parameter inside here. And actually, here we are invoking it. And basically, you can see the difference that whenever we go to 42, so let's call here 42, you can see even Android Studio now is opening up Kali Brasses directly, basically, meaning that we have a lambda function or a lambda syntax. Basically, whenever you have only the parameter that is a, a, a function, then you can easily omit entirely the parentheses and just call this a uh, curly braces. Or if you have this to be the last one, but if this is not the last one, so for example, let's call here a that is going to be of type int. You can see we are going to have errors here instead because whenever you hover around, you can see that the type is going to be mismatching. So what we have to do is to make this to be the last one. So you can easily flip this. And actually now we don't have errors with our curly braces. And here we can just pass in two. So this is just a lambda function. And the different part here is that this is a composable function that is going to pass in the composable scope. So I wanted to let you know, uh, not get confused whenever you progress through JEPA Compose. And if you want to learn more about this, I have a comprehensive course that teaches all about JEPA Compose in more detail. So you can check the link in the description box. Okay, so I hope that is clear. Now let's try to rerun here and see one thing. Okay, so you can see here our app is launched and we are seeing here the text is just behind this button here. And this is happening because there is no any type of layout that tells JEPA Compose how to uh, actually align the children inside this particular scope. So for that case, it's going to keep them at the top left corner. And this is happening because this is the starting point or the coordinates that JEPA Compose is going to get there, uh, the drawings to start. So here is just 0, 0, and basically it's going to just keep it at the top left corner, everything there. So we have to use layouts in order to tell, hey, I want now to structure this in a horizontal or in a vertical sequenced format whenever you receive a children. So we have three types of uh, composables that are going to be crucial when you want to lay out things in JEPA Compose. Okay, so for example, if we want to keep these two inside a, a, a vertical sequenced format, we can easily use one thing. So you can press here Control Alt J and basically you can easily surround with a certain thing. So here I'm just going to click surround with a column. And you can see right now here we have this composable, that is a column, and now we are inside a column, a scope. Now I'm not changing anything else, and let's try to run here, and you can see the difference. Okay, so now I have just added the column, and you can see now everything is arranged in a horizontal sequence format. Now let me change here, instead of a column, Let's change this to a row. Now let's try to rerun. Okay, so now you can see things are arranged horizontally, not stacking on top of each other. So these were two most important composables. So you can nest them and create stunning UI using just these two. And there is one more that is called a box composable. So the box composable is going to stack everything in on top of each other. So this one is going to be feel it's going to feel similar like how we started, but now we have a lot of control on how we can keep them. So for example, let's just call here a box. And let's try to rerun. So you can see here we are like in the beginning of our application where we saw all of these are intertwining here. So everything is stuck on top of each other. So you can use this in order to create a stunning UIs. Okay, so now we want to create a simple UI that is going to demonstrate the power of using these particular composables. So now let's just delete this 
because we are not going to need them anymore. Let's create a new composable. Let's just call this item. Okay, so inside here, we're going to arrange everything inside a row format. So basically, we're just going to put up a law. And here, basically, now we can use a modifier. So if you don't know a modifier, a modifier is something that is going to modify the behavior of this particular composable. So particularly now these composables have one uh, state that basically they are going to wrap the content which is going to be inside there in order to create their size. So for example, this row is going to be uh, as big as its children. So for this case, we can easily override that by using a modifier. So for example, let's pass in here the modifier. And this one is called a default modifier because we are passing here a default a parameter. And this is really crucial to pass in here a modifier. Uh, I'm going to explain why. Then we can modify the behavior of this in order to take the max width. So for example, here we're just calling fill max width. Now we here we have a row scope and basically now everything is going to be arranged in a horizontal sequenced format. So basically here I want to create two text and basically these two texts are going to be uh, on top of each other. So we can use a column in order to structure that. So let's create here a column. And for example here, let's create a text. Let's call this learning composable in multi-platform. So for example here, we can change the style. So a style, this is a parameter that you can use to change the particular text style. So for example here, I'm going to use material theme. And basically by passing here a typography, I can change by using a header six, for example. Now I want to make this to be bold, so I can change by using a font weight. So this is a parameter. So let's pass in here font weight. And basically here we can call font weight bold. Another case is whenever the space is going to be small, I want to uh, make this, for example here, I'm going to make this to be on, maximum we have only one line now if the text is going to be bigger than one line i want to show to the user that we have ellipses so we can use overflow for example now let's call here text overflow ellipses and this one is going to crop everything and basically now we can create another text so here basically we can just pass in this text here so we can just call the creative framework for sharing uis across uh, multi-platforms Okay, so the next case here is we can pass in the parameters. So let's change the style for this. Okay, so here we used a header six, so we can call here typography, and we want to use body one because this is just the text which we want. Okay, so max line here for our case, we are just going to give it two, for example. And if the text also is bigger, we can just use here the text overflow. Let's just call this ellipses. Okay, now let's try to call here our item. So we want to see the text which we have created. Let's call here our item. And let's try to run here. Okay, so here we have our text. So you can see this is bold and this one's just a normal text. And basically here we want now to also add other things. So we have a row. Now you can see these two texts are arranged in a, in, a, in a vertical sequenced format. So I want to add here also a text, for example, that shows time. And also here, another text that is going to show a particular icon. So for example, an icon that shows a, a user, a username. Okay, so here we have our first column. So I want here to display time and also an, a favorite icon, for example. So we can create here another column. And basically, let's create here a text. And for now, we can just pass in here any time. So for example, Okay, so I can customize this particular text by changing the color. So for example, I want to use a color. Here we can use a material theme or directly we can provide a color value. So for example, let's give it directly the color value. So we can just pass in here color with blue, for example. Okay, so this is a different color. So we have to use a color that is a composable. So let's just call here Android X composable. Okay, so for this case, we can just optimize our import. So inside here, I want to create a view that is going to be similar like this one here, but a rounded one. So basically, this one is going to show a text and basically a background uh, from it. So for this case, I can create a box. 
and inside here the box because everything is going to be stacked on top of each other then i can create a surface so let's create here a surface for example so a surface this is just a, an elevation that is going to display uh, at that particular view so for this case i can create this surface here and customize it so let me pass in here color so the color i'm going to use a material theme and i want to use the primary color be the background of this so it can be different depending on the theme which you are in the next case is the shape so i can pass in here and our shape is just going to be a circular shape and here basically i can give it a size so let me pass in here modify and give it a size of 46 dp for example okay so we have here the surface now i want to create a text so for example here i can create a text okay so for the text i'm just going to give it h now we can change the font weight and we want to make this to be bold okay so we have used all three of them so we have a box a column a column also so let's try to run here and you can see what we have okay so here we have our text and you can see like everything is in a mess and this is happening because we have not set certain things here so the first case here is we are not seeing the time in that uh, favorite icon because it has been pushed out of the view and because the view is just actually this text is bigger so when we increase the view you can see that we have our text here but if our our view is going to be smaller then this text is going to be hidden and you can see also here this one is not perfectly aligned so i did this on purpose in order to show you things which are going to help you so the first case i want to show you regarding the box so inside here the box we have one thing that is called the content alignment so this content alignment is going to help you align this content which you have here in a different aspect so for example here i can just call uh, alignment dot center now let's try to rerun and you can see the changes which we have made okay so now you can see the text here is just going to be uh, inside here another case which i want to change here you can see the text is actually black so i want to change the color also of this text so the color of this text we can just use a material theme dot colors and here i want to use the own primary so this one is going to be the primary color so the own primary can be different depending on that particular view which you are okay so the next case here is i want to make this to occupy a space so that we can fit everything inside the window so how can we do this automatically at runtime so basically we can easily fix this by doing one thing so the first case is by using a modifier so here let's just pass in a modifier and i want to use a modifier that is just called weight so i want to give this a weight of 1f and i want to give it false to be the fill in bonds so when you press ctrl q here you can see the documentation so this one is going to cite the element with proportion to its weight relative to other weighted siblings in the row so for this case this one is going to help us to track that space across the sibling according to this weight which we are providing here so for our case we have given it a weight of 1f so the next case is this particular column here i want to change it and give it another weight so for example let's pass in here the modifier let's also give it a weight of 2f and similarly let's just press ctrl c and copy this and lastly for our third item here i want to give it also a weight but instead of 2f i'm just going to give it 1f and the fill bound i'm just going to give it to be false so now let's try and rerun and see the changes we have made okay so now you can see here everything is taking up the shape and you can see no any uh, particular item is going to be sent out of the view but I want to make this to distribute the space evenly so that we can easily see everything well organized. So for this case, I can create one thing. So let's just go directly 
So here inside the row, we have other parameters which we can use to configure this. And like we used inside here the box, we used a content alignment. So for here, we're not going to use a content alignment. However, we're just going to use a horizontal arrangement. So for horizontal arrangement, I'm going to use a arrangement dot space evenly. So this one is going to space everything evenly across the axis. And the next case is the vertical alignment. So you can see here we have this. So this one is going to spread it uh, evenly. Now I want also this to be a space at the center. So you can see now there is a space here. So if you want to center it, you can use a vertical alignment here inside a row. So we can just call here alignment and call center vertically. Now let's try and run and see the changes. Okay, so now you can see everything is spaced evenly and you can see now the space here is going to be distributed. So this is how you can use composables to actually make everything look perfectly. So another case here, I want to change one thing that is basically inside here. I just decrease the font. So when you look here, I want to group these two to be together and also space this between. So we can use here another composable. So for example, instead here of space evenly, I can just call this space between and you're going to see the effect here. And instead these two, I'm going to create another row. So here I can press control X. So you can see we can create any type of UI using these three building blocks. So here I can create another row. And now instead here, I'm going to create a spacer. Now, instead of giving it height, I'm just going to give it a width because we are in a horizontal, uh, horizontal format. So here, I'm just going to give it 80 dp, for example, in order to space it. Okay, so you're going to see here the difference. And another case inside here, I can just give it this. So let me just copy this, the vertical alignment of this particular row here. So now we are going to see the difference because here now we're using a space between instead of space evenly. So let's just stop and rerun again. Okay, so you can see we are grouping this together and we are spacing this between. So the space between is going to push the composables to the bounds. So here you can see this one is going to the right and this one is going to go to the left. Okay, so now we have learned about these rows and columns and box and how we can nest them to create the UI which we require. So the next important thing in uh, Jepa Compose is states. So the next case, let's learn about states and understand them. Okay, so now I want to create an application like this one here. So this is going to teach us essentially about the states. So for example, here I can add a to-do. So for example, let's just call this to-do one and click save to-do. You can see we have this to-do. And whenever I click completed here, you can see it's going to uh, stroke this. Let's create a to-do two and save it so you can see we have another to do and whenever i click it it's going to add it here so basically i want to create this uh, a particular item which is going to teach us about states so let's do this next okay so now let's just go below here and create a new composable and we are going to call this to do green so essentially a state is like we are storing something that we want to take it back later so it's like the heart of our application so a user needs to perform actions. So we have to remember the states. For example, if a checkbox is going to be checked, then we have to remember that particular state in order to keep up with our application. So in Jepa Compose, you can create a state like a variable. So for example, if you're coming from a React Native, you know that we have state hooks. So for example, uses state and other things similar like that. So in Jepa Compose is similar like that. So for example, we can create a variable. So this variable is just going to be a to-do list. And this to-do list can be, for example, a list of. So here, a list of, for example, an empty string. And basically, this is just a state at this particular point of time. So we can add and remove items through this list here. But basically, now we are not remembering it because Jepa Compose, they have something that is called a composition. So a composition is going to happen whenever a state changes or a UI change is going to happen, then Jepa Compose is going to re-render it. So this function here is going to be called every time there is a change in the state. 
or there is a change in ui action so basically this one is going to be reinitialized back to an empty string so that state is going to be lost essentially so we have to keep a mechanism to keep track of that state so in jepa compose there is a different way of keeping this state so we have to call here a remember and this remember is just a lambda function that is going to keep track of this particular state so for example right now we can create a list of and if this list is going to be an empty string at this particular point of time so whenever we increment this particular type of list then the state whenever it changes then it's going to add it but right now we have no any type of telling the composable function that hey this particular list has changed so you can recompose it so for that case jepa compose come in with a special particular state that is going to keep up track of that so instead of just calling here list so essentially we can just call here for example a mutable state list of particular uh, point so for example here we want to keep this to be of type of string okay so right now when you press ctrl q here you can see we have a snapshot state list and basically this one is going to keep track of the state and tell composable hey this particular ui has changed so re render the entire ui so right now here i want to create that particular view so we can easily use a column in order to create everything so for our column here i'm going to give the modifier now inside here i want to create a card that is going to display those particular entries which we can use to insert our data so for example here we can create a column sorry we can create a card so a card is just a special type uh, that is going to create a, a visual difference between particular items so that's why we are using here a card and this card i'm going to give it a modifier so let's give it a modifier and we can change here the padding and give it a padding of 8 dp now i want to show here a text field so a text field is a special composable that is going to take input from user so let's call this text field and essentially everything in jepa compose is stateless meaning that it has no state so we have to create our own state in order to keep track of a text field so for example here this text field expect a value and also it expects another parameter that is called on value change which receives a lambda function and basically without any particular state this text field is going to be functionless so basically whenever we type anything here it's going it's not going to function so for this case we have to provide a state so this state is going to be a different type of state and you can declare a state for example you can just call here a to do and use a remember now here we can use a mutable state and not a mutable state list because right now we are not keeping track of a list, a list and we are just keeping track of a single text so for this case we can just give it a mutable state of an empty string and here we can change it back to val now here we can just pass in here the to do and instead here on the on value change now this one is going to return as a string so when you hover around here and press ctrl q okay sorry so this particular to do here is going to return a state so when you press ctrl q you can see that this is a mutable state so instead we have to call uh, dot value in order to pass it here now let's just go here to the on value and press ctrl q you can see this is just a lambda function that takes in a parameter of a string and returns a unit so basically here we have a string uh, that is going to be passed here so in order to change that state we can just uh, reinitialize this to do here and initialize it to e. let's call this dot value and you can see now our state is going to be changed so here basically we are passing the uh, text to be rendered then here we are going to change that whenever we type in here so essentially here we have a state and the on value this is called an event and basically this is a common state in jepa compose if you are new at it okay so if you have a state like this one here there are multiple ways of declaring this state so for example you can use here a by 
delegate method that is going to help you tremendously to avoid those dot values dot values because they are getting really annoying sometimes so you have to import this let's place alt enter and import the get and set value so right now we can easily just call this to do and instead here of calling dot value and also we can just reinitialize it directly so you can see now we are just receiving a string and not a mutable string so this was the first step of defining a particular state and if you want to define a state and its function also so you can create another one so for example here we can just call this to do and on set to do so this one is just the destructuring of it and we can just call here remember mutable state of an empty string let's just delete this so here you can see we are receiving a to do and setting the to do we can directly just call here the on set to do let's just call here on set to do and when you hover around here and press ctrl q you can see the on set to do is particularly a string that returns a unit which matches the function that is here that is taking the string returning a unit so directly you can just declare a state like that okay so after we finish to create our text field here i want to create a column actually and for a column i want to pass in here a modifier and also let's give it a padding of for dp now we can pass in here our text field now I want to pass in here a spacer, give it a height of 16 dp. The next case I want to create a button. So here we have the on click. Let's give it a text and we can call this save to do. This is a button. Okay, now whenever we click this button, I want to change the list. So we can just call here our to do list. And we can just call here add. And basically we can pass in here an element and that is just going to be the to do and that is the state which we are keeping track of so essentially now we have here a place where we can add our data the next case we can just display here a spacer let's create another column so basically now we can use a list that which we have so for example the to do list so let's just call here our to do list and for each we can now display our to do now to create our to do i want to create a separate composable that is called the to do item that is going to display that particular to do so for now let's first try and run our application to see uh, if everything is working perfectly so instead of calling the items i want to call this to do screen now let's rerun here and you can see what we have written okay so right now here you can see we have our text field let's try to write uh, just different text so you can see we are just clicking it and nothing is happening okay so now here we have so we are saving it but not displaying that particular state so for this case let's just go here and create our to-do item so let's just go below and create a new composable let's just call this to-do item so basically for this to do item here we're going to receive an item as a parameter that is going to be of type string okay so here also i want to create another state so this one is going to be a checked so if our box is going to be checked and also we have the set checked okay so here we can use our mutable state of and this one is just going to be a state of force so now we are keeping track of a boolean value so you can keep any type of value inside this state even a custom class so basically here i want to create a box let's give it a content alignment and i want to align it to the center now for each particular item i want to create a card so now we can fill max width and give it a padding let's give it a padding of 8 dp okay now let's create here a column and here we have our text and this text is actually going to be directly our item and we can change the style so i'm going to use a material theme typography and header six 
Okay, so inside here, I want to use the state in order to display this particular text. So I can customize this by calling here dot copy. Okay, I want to decorate this text. So we can use decoration and use an if statement. Let's check here if it's going to be checked. Then we can use text decoration. Dot line through. And if it's not checked, then we can just return here a text decorations dot none. Okay, so this is how we can easily use this state here in order to keep track of it. Okay, so let's give it here a spacer. And we can give it a 16 dp to create a, a space. The next case here, I want to create a low that is going to display the text completed and the checkbox. So let's create here a row below this. Now I can pass in here modifier and I want to fill the max width. So we can align it center vertically. And the horizontal arrangement, I want to use arrangement or space between. Now here we can display a text that is just called the completed. And here we can use a checkbox. Now this requires a state that is just called the checked. And the unchecked change. Basically, we can pass in here set checked. So as you can see, every composable here is stateless actually. So right now here we have our to-do item. So directly we can go inside here for each. So here essentially we have the item. So we can just call here our to-do item. And let's pass in here the item. Okay, so now let's try to rerun. Okay, so now we have here our item. So let's just call this to do. And you can see basically this item is displayed here. So when we save again, and basically it's displayed again here. Okay, so this is happening because of one thing. So inside here, our to do screen. We have to give this all of them as a color. Okay, so for that case, it's going to have uh, and respect all the layout uh, systems. So for this, let's rerun again. Okay, so now let's just write here a bunch of text. You can see now it's displaying correctly. Let's call this test two and save it. Now, whenever I click here, you can see it's highlighting. But now let's click here to go to four and save it. You can see now we are out of the view and basically we cannot scroll. So to create a scrollable, you can use a scrollable modifier or you can easily use a lazy layout. So a lazy layout is like uh, how the name suggests is going to lazily render the items that are visible. And actually, if we have thousands of items, basically a column is not a great aspect for this. Okay, so using a column here is actually not a good idea. So if we have thousands of to-do items that are going to be saved here, this is going to be a really problem. So we can use a lazy column or a lazy row which as the name suggests, they are going to lazily render the items which are visible at a particular point of time. And this one is going to help us efficiently. So instead of using this uh, with a for each, so basically here we can easily omit this column here. Now let's create here lazy and call it lazy column. So right now here we have a lazy column scope and instead we cannot call here directly the composable. So we have to use these items and basically we want to pass in here the list. So the list here is our uh, to-do list. So we can just call here to-do list. And here basically we can receive the item as our item. So now we can call here our to-do item. And for the item we can easily pass it here. 
So right now nothing is going to change visually except for the scrolling and basically now we efficiently render the items so let's try to run here and see now let's call here to do item one let's save it and here to do item two and do it endlessly so you can see right now we can easily scroll and this one is just a scrollable and this one is going to efficiently render these items now Whenever you do this, you can see that is checked. So another case, I want to show you how you can easily remove this. So whenever you click this, then this particular item is going to be removed. So here is how we can easily do this. So let's just go here to our to-do item. So basically here we have hoisted the state to this composable killer, which is just basically the to-do list. Now what we want to do is whenever we click this to-do item uh, here down, we want to delete that to-do item. So basically for this case, we can easily add a modifier here and a modifier can be anything. So let's pass in here modifier to our box and call it dot clickable. This one is going to add a behavior to this composable box that whenever it's clicked, then we can invoke this by passing a clickable. So for this case, I want to pass in here the on click. And this on click actually is a lambda function that takes in no parameter and returns a unit. So for this case, inside this clickable, I can just call the on click and invoke it here. Now inside here, I can open up my parentheses. Right now here I have a clickability. So what I can do, I can just call here the to do list and call this remove and actually pass in here the element that is the item. Now let's try to rerun again. So our app is launched. Let's go directly inside here. Let's light a test one. Let's save it and add here test two. Let's just add a bunch of. Now, whenever I click this, you can see that they are just uh, finishing. Let's change this to text three. Save it. Text four and save it. Now, let me click this text three here. You can see that it's actually deleting here. And that is how you change the state and actually you save it and remove it. And basically, this is how you multiply the states. And these are essential in Jepa Compose because everything is a state and every composable is stateless. So you have to know how to manage your state in order to create a functional application. Okay, so we have been running through a desktop. Now let's try to run this inside our app. So we can just run it here through our mobile application and see it in Android. Okay, so our app is launched uh, through our mobile. Now we can try to enter here also. So for example, let's call this to do one. And you can see that we are just saving the item. Let's click here. So everything is working as expected. Let's click this to do one. And you can see that the to do one is actually deleted here. And this is how essentially we do an item and we have created our uh, mobile application and as well as our desktop application. So we are unable to run an iOS version because I don't have a, a, a Mac OS to run that uh, application. So if you have an iOS, you can easily just run it uh, using Xcode. So for this case, here we have our application. So as you have noticed that whenever we rerun our application that our data is not persisted. And this is actually, we are not using a persistent library. So in the next video, we are going to learn about room database and how we can persist our data. So you can check the video next here. So until now, let's leave it here. So if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to provide a like, subscribe and share this. So see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.